Hi everyone, it's Justine from the Sacred Heart Homestead. I'm a homeschooling wife and mother to six living in Ontario, Canada. This week, I wanted to take you along with me on a regular, ordinary day in the life. We're in a weird season right now where the routines that had worked for us before are starting to crumble. And I'm kind of struggling to find how I'm going to get through the next season of our lives. I try to usually get up before the kids, but I find that lately, because the baby hasn't been sleeping very well, I wake up just before or right on time for the kids to wake up. And so often, over the last few weeks, I've had the little ones join me as I do my morning prayers. I don't ever want my kids to feel like I don't appreciate them, especially because I'm the first person that they see in the morning. And so I'm trying to make an effort to not get irritated by the fact that they are disturbing what I'm doing. After finishing my morning prayers and making sure everyone is settled, either with a game or a book or something like that, I head out the door and I go do my morning chores. Spring is slowly creeping in where we are in Canada. And so even though the snow has all melted, it's still quite cold in the morning and we do have to bundle up. The animals don't seem to mind, however. The chickens are finally out of their coop. We've extended their run into the yard so they're able to go forage all day long and they are really enjoying being out in the sun. Because of the extra greens they are getting and all the protein they get from foraging outside, their eggs have been especially delicious and their yolks have been bright yellow. So it really is a blessing to have them out like that. Another change that has happened over the last few weeks is that the roosters have been separated from the guinea fowl. So now we can focus on breeding the guinea fowl and the roosters now have access to the outside so they are spending time with our calves. I don't think I mentioned this in my last video, but we finally decided to wean our calf Mabel from her mom so we can have more milk. This means that we've had to move her in with John Dory, our little calf, and they've slowly been becoming good friends. This also means that Mabel and I have had to butt heads every morning. Mabel is a six month old heifer. And so if you've ever worked with a heifer before, you know that they can sometimes be a handful. I think it's good though. It's going to allow me to work one-on-one -on -one with a cow that we are eventually going to be using for milk. And so I can get more comfortable with her and she can get comfortable with me. And in the end, I think it'll just be a positive experience for both of us. However, this has doubled the amount of work that I have to do for chores in the morning. And so that's also part of this weird season where I'm going to have to figure out new routines. In the coming weeks, we're going to get some meat birds, and when they're babies, they are usually my responsibility. And so that will add to my morning as well. And the routines that we had set up previously just aren't going to work. For someone who's organized like me and more of a type A and who wants everything to be planned to the very last minute, it is so difficult to admit that a routine is no longer working. But I think that it's also a great time to reevaluate how you've been doing things and also if you could do things more efficiently. And so in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to take some time and figure out how the mornings are going to go as of now. I might have to wake up a little bit earlier and I think that that will very much help um, the extra work that I'm going to have to take on. Once I got back inside, I got started on breakfast. Um, because I had lots of leftover sourdough bread, I decided to make a French toast casserole because it's quick and easy and I could get a workout while it was in the oven. I've shared this recipe in a previous video, so I will go ahead and link that in the description 
so you guys can have quick access to it. But basically you take a, um, an old loaf of bread, cut it up into squares, um, melt some butter in a separate bowl, add some eggs and some milk, some cinnamon, some vanilla, blend that all up together, pour it over the top of the cubed bread, and then you can sprinkle on a little bit of sugar on top if you'd like, but it's completely up to you. Once you're done with that, take that melted butter and pour it right over the top of the cubes, stick it in the oven for about 40 minutes, and it'll be ready to go. And you can serve that with maple syrup or powdered sugar, whatever you prefer. By the time I got the French toast casserole into the oven, it was getting quite late, um, but the kids were actually off of school this day, so I decided I would try to get a run in anyways. I find that if I'm having a bad day or if I'm running behind, it's actually more important for me to get a workout in um, because it makes me feel like I have control over something in my life, and so I do try to fit it in as much as possible. We served our French toast casserole with some maple syrup. We have been gifted so much maple syrup over the last couple weeks, so it's going to go in everything. As the kids were eating breakfast, I took the opportunity to just run and have a quick shower and um, get ready for the day. I did my hair really quickly and I got dressed. I've said this before, but I do try to prioritize getting ready every single day. Um, it'd be so easy for me to just throw my hair in a messy bun and wear my PJs all day. Um, but I know my husband appreciates when I make an effort to at least look half decent. And so I try to do that. And then I ran upstairs and started another load of laundry. Um, laundry is one of the systems that I'm still trying to get a hang of. I thought I had it down by doing a load a day and recently it's starting to feel like even a load a day is not quite enough and I'm finding it hard to get the loads folded. It's just kind of been all over the place. So this is a system I'm going to have to rework as well. If you guys have any tips about how to keep on top of large family laundry, just let me know in the comments because I'm looking for this right now. We also have most of our seedlings going now. Um, so my tomatoes and peppers and all that stuff went in last week. And so I've just been keeping on top of keeping the soil damp, not wet, um, because I've had issues with mold before on top of the soil and trying to get all those seeds to germinate. When I was done watering the plants, the baby woke up and so I went to snuggle her for a little bit and made my bed because that's something I actually try to keep on top of because it makes my room look so much better. My husband and I have plans to renovate our attic space and turn that into our master bedroom. And so this room is just kind of like the room that our bed is in. Um, I don't really consider it our bedroom because it's just, it's really ugly, it's unfinished. It's not the way I would like it. But if I keep on top of making the bed, at least it makes it feel a little bit better. Afterwards, we went downstairs and I nursed the baby and had some time with my littles. And once they were content, I went straight into cleaning up after breakfast, cleaning up the breakfast dishes and getting everything sorted in there. My toddler got this sink that you can pump water into for his birthday and I decided to set it up for him so he would be distracted and stop bothering me while I was trying to get the dishes done. And it seemed to work. Once the dishes were put away and the kitchen was semi-organized, I got started on supper. I was planning to make chicken pot pie, so I had to cook a chicken, so I only had a half frozen chicken, which is fine. I threw it in my crock pot, I had some oil, some salt, some pepper, some onion powder, some garlic powder, and then I just cooked it on low all day. 
my next task was to get some hot cross buns shaped so that they could proof again. And so I cut up all my dough into a bunch of pieces and I put those on parchment paper. Um, I have that recipe up for you guys. I'm going to link it down in the description um, so you have it on hand. Um, but it's a sourdough hot cross bun recipe. Um, it uses um, lots of raisins, some cloves, some cinnamon, all those classic flavors. And then I top it off with an orange glaze. I made a huge batch of these and I was a little worried that we'd have too many but the kids ate these like crazy um, I think they had them like four days in a row it was to a point where my toddler would be making me like pretend food in his little kitchenette and he'd tell me that he was making me hot cross hot cross so they I guess they enjoyed it afterwards I had to finish some cheese that I had started the day before um, I had started making some quark um, which is like a soft cream cheese I get this recipe from Kate at venison for dinner I will link it in the comments so you guys can have it um, but it's so easy you just heat up some milk add some mesophilic culture I believe and then you cut it up um, into curds and you let those curds hang for a few hours add some salt and then you have like this delicious soft super easy cream cheese this is actually the cream cheese that we use for bagels and for making cheesecake. It makes a really delicious cheesecake, actually. That's what I always ask for on my birthday is a cheesecake using this specific cheese. Hey, it. And so for the rest of the day, you'll probably see these cheeses hanging from um, my cabinets, so just know that that's what it is. It's cheese. I also had to strain off some yogurt. Um, seems like I'm doing a lot of stuff with dairy. Um, that's kind of the curse and the blessing of having a dairy cow. There is always milk to be dealt with. There's always something to be done. Um, I try to stagger it throughout the week so I don't get overwhelmed, but unfortunately some days it seems like everything needs to be dealt with at the same time, and that is just one of those days. After I was done with all the dairy products, I started on some loaves of sandwich bread. This is a recipe I got from Kate at Venison for Dinner again. It's her super soft sandwich bread, I believe. Um, I'll link that recipe in the comments as well. Um, so I used to make this recipe quite a bit about a year ago and for some reason I just stopped doing it. I think it's because it dirties a mixer um, but I wanted to make sandwiches specifically with this loaf and the regular sourdough recipe that I use um, doesn't work as well for sandwiches. Like it's a great bread to have with soup and just every day um, but it doesn't make great sandwiches probably because of the shape and so I decided I would make that. When I was done getting the bread proofing, I started on lunch for the kids because they were saying they were hungry. I decided to just make some super easy and quick peanut butter and jellies. Um, where would I be if I wasn't for peanut butter jelly? I have no idea what I would make them for lunch half the time. This is my go-to when I don't know what I'm making and I just need something quick to fill their bellies. We had some leftover hot dog buns, so I just used those and everyone was happy with what they ate. Um, because there wasn't a lot, like a lot of nutrients in what I served them, I decided to serve it with some raw chocolate milk um, just to fill up their bellies and to boost the nutrient content of their meal. After lunch, the kids had lots of energy to burn and my husband was home early from work. So we decided to take the kids outside for a walk just around our own property. And so the kids got all ready, they put on their backpacks, they were like, we're going for a hike. And they all got ready and it was a beautiful day outside and we all had the best time. Yours? 
The baby is getting to an age where she's no longer content just sitting there watching the others play. She wants to be involved in it. And so it's kind of changed the way that I have to play outside with them. I can't just sit passively by and just watch them go around. I have to sit in the sandbox with her to make sure she doesn't tip over and cry and have a face full of sand and make sure she's not eating too much sand because we all know she's going to eat a little bit. During our hike, we walked past the cows. I took a moment to get the shot of Honey Mayer, dairy cow. She is due in June and she is getting so fat. Um, and then afterwards, we walk towards the back of our property. There's so many weeds and stuff back here during the summer, it's hard to get to. Um, but my husband and I just walked around with the kids and looked at everything and discussed how we were going to take advantage of our property because there's really quite a bit back here that we're underutilizing. Um, and so that's just something to think about this summer. The baby got really fussy outside and so I decided it was time to take her in for her nap. Once she was sleeping, I had the opportunity to finish the sourdough hot cross buns that I had started in the morning. Um, so I got some flour and some water ready. I put that in a piping bag and then I just piped some crosses across the top of all the hot cross buns. When I was little, I used to think that the crosses were like sugary, but now that I'm older, I realize they never were and it was just my imagination. <laughs> like it wasn't like it was icing sugar or anything on the ones that I was eating, at least, um, because we got them at church on Good Friday. Um, so it was definitely not a sweet treat. However, my kids will tell you that these are pretty good considering they have that orange glaze on the top. As my hot cross buns were cooking, I decided to start on the shaping of my dough for the sourdough sandwich loaves. So I divided the dough into two and then I folded it into a rectangle um, and turned it over and then I let it bench proof for about 15 minutes. And because I have cats and I don't trust them, I covered it with a little towel so that I knew they wouldn't get at it. The 15 minutes of proofing gave me time to go clean the bathroom, which was part of my chore. I always clean the bathroom either on Wednesdays or Thursdays. I try to be consistent about it. Um, I find it helps to have a dedicated day to do it because then I can remember not to overload those days and make sure that I get the bathrooms done. Um, quite honestly, it'd probably benefit from being clean twice a week, but all I have the capacity to do at the moment is once a week, so it'll just have to do. And if it's like really gross in there, then I will go in and scrub. Um, I don't know what kids do in the bathroom. They just like get mud all over the place. And quite honestly, I'm not gonna lie, my husband and I, when it's gardening season, we also get mud everywhere. And so I do a full clean once a week, and then I do touch-ups throughout the week as needed. Once the dough is proof, I shaped it back into a rectangle, folded it into a triangle, and then starting from the smaller end, I rolled it into a loaf, tucked the ends in, and shaped it into the right size loaf for my pan. Once I was happy with the shape, I put it on a piece of parchment paper and I popped it into my little loaf pan to um, rise again for another few hours. This time I covered it with a damp towel. Finally, the hot cross buns were ready to be taken out of the oven. 
Um, so I pulled those out and I got my glaze ready. Um, I had made this a little bit earlier, so all I need to do was thin it out so I could easily spread it on top of the buns. And so I added some hot water to it and then I began glazing all the cock cross buns with the orange glaze. Shortly after glazing the hot cross buns, I took that chicken out of the um, slow cooker that we had started in the morning. Um, if you guys are going to eat this just like a rotisserie chicken, which you totally can, um, just make sure to pop it into the oven and then you can broil it um, for a few minutes just to get that crispy skin on top. Since it was getting late in the day, I got started on a chicken pot pie. Um, so the first thing I did was cut up an onion and some garlic and I got those sautéing in a pan um, with some lard. As the onions were sauteing, I took the opportunity to take apart the chicken, so I cut up some of the breasts, and then I decided to add the legs and the thighs and everything to it as well. So we used a whole chicken for this chicken pot pie, which seems like a lot of chicken, but if you have like seven people, well actually the little one's eating too now, so eight people eating, um, it actually takes quite a bit to fill up bellies. Afterwards to my pan of onions, I added some frozen mixed vegetables. I sometimes cut up some vegetables, but this day I just didn't feel like it. And so that's why I buy those mixed veggies um, because everyone in my family enjoys it and it's a quick um, vegetable side or it can go in a chicken pot pie like this. Once I was done with that, I added some of that chicken juice that was left over from the crock pot and about a cup of cream. Um, I also threw in some sage, some thyme, some salt and pepper. And then while I was doing that, my little guy came in and told me he had found some eggs in the chicken coop. So I grabbed those and went right back to my sauce and I added all the chicken into the mixture and I waited for it to thicken up. Usually I add some cornstarch and I probably should have added cornstarch to this. Um, but it looked pretty thick after I added the chicken, and so I decided it was just good enough. I had some pie crust already ready, and so I put it in a pie plate. I added the mixture in, and then I put the top of the pie crust on top of it. Um, from there, I sealed the edges, um, cut out some holes for ventilation, and then I popped it into the oven. It took about 30 minutes for it to cook, and I actually forgot it was in there, so you guys will see it's a little browner than I would have liked, um, but that's all right. It was still good to eat. Those extra strips you see on top are just extra pieces of pie crust that were left. I hate wasting anything, and so I just pop them on top of the pie, um, and the kids will eat them just like that. They actually want them on their piece of pie, so sometimes I'll just pull it off and give it to them specifically. So at this point during our day, the kids are cleaning the house um, and just tidying everything up before we sit down to dinner. Um, so that gave me the opportunity to just get back to that sourdough um, sandwich bread that I had started earlier. Um, so I scored the top so it would expand properly and then I put it into the oven for about 40 minutes. I also had the chance to finish up that cork that I had started earlier. Um, so I just took that cheese that I had drained. You can see it's quite thick now. I added two teaspoons of salt, mixed it all together. Um, you can even use like an immersion blender or something like that to get it very, very um, blended together. And then I added it to a glass jar to be used at a later date. This will last about two weeks in your fridge. Once I was done doing all that, I tidied up my kitchen um, because I like to have as little dishes as possible after I'm done eating. 
And then I was trying to figure out what to serve as a side for chicken pot pie, and my husband said more chicken pot pie. So I decided to serve it with some sauerkraut and some pickles. Um, so I had to go get that from our fridge in the barn where we store all our ferments. I'm always so thankful for past Justine who took a bunch of time to ferment all these things from the garden because present Justine gets a break every once in a while and gets to serve just sauerkraut and pickles as a side instead of cutting something up and having to make something else. While we were eating dinner, I took a quick break to get both of the sandwich loaves out of the oven and I immediately smeared them with butter so it would give the top of the crust um, a very soft texture and they were delicious. We really enjoyed these two loaves. After dinner, we quickly cleaned up all the dishes and swept the floors and just got everything tidied up. We let the kids sit down and watch a saint movie, um, which is just a movie about a saint that we watch on Formed. And while they were busy doing that, my husband and I got to work opening up my new carpet. This is such an exciting moment for me, guys. I had been saving for this carpet and waiting for it to go on sale. Um, it was a really expensive carpet, but it went on sale for like 54% off. And so once I saw that, I had the money put aside and I went ahead and I bought it. Um, we had gotten another carpet earlier and I really hated it and I had to send it back and it was a whole thing. Um, so this was like a year process in the making. And I am very happy with how it turned out. It goes exactly with the look we're looking for. Afterwards, the kids brushed their teeth and we sat down to pray our daily family rosary. And that was the end of the day. If you have a chance, I'd really love it if you could hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, or if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm here every Thursday with a new video filled with content exactly like this. I'll see you all next time.